Hey everybody, it's me, Michael Anthony Judicissi, M-A-G, MAG, I don't know what y'all been calling me. <laughs> well, <I, laughs> you've been calling me something else behind the scenes. But welcome to All Things Billy the Kid. And I've uh, been gone for a few days. I'm still here in Texas uh, doing some work, getting some uh, show ideas, and uh, doing whatever needs, doing a little fishing too. Um, so I am coming to you to talk to you about a really special project that I'm really excited to be a part of. Part of, heck, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm spearheading it now. And so uh, I want to uh, give you a quick update on that. Thanks for everybody for watching. Uh, everybody Loves Steve, that must be a new TV show, because uh, Everybody Loves Steve Cedarwall, uh, you know, off the charts with the number of views and comments, so thanks to old Steve. Uh, I want to give you an update on a few things. So first, people have said, oh, well, we saw the Steve Cedarwall interview, that's part of a movie, when's the movie coming out? Answer is, by the end of this year. Now, that might sound like a long time away, but the end of this year, it, but five months away right now. Uh, so before then, we will have a fully uh, edited and ready to go documentary called The Billy the Kid Tapes. And uh, as I've talked about before, it's interviews with Steve Cedarwall, David Thomas, uh, Sheriff, the late Sheriff Gary Graves, uh, Bill Richardson, Governor of New Mexico, uh, a number of other people, and really putting together a, a picture of you know what, what's, what's gone on in the, in the Billy the Kid world since he died and why can't we know more. Uh, so uh, I'm hard at work on that, doing the editing. I'm doing the editing myself, which is the downfall of a documentary because you can't give a script and the footage to an editor and say, take this and turn it into this. So I've got to do it, but um, I've got some time coming up where I can get that done. And so uh, by the end of the year, where will it be available? That's a great question. And the answer is, I don't have any idea yet. <laughs> I really don't know. Um, I just don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. We'll put it right here on the YouTube channel, free of charge for everybody. And uh, we'll just see if we can drive the views and ad revenue. Maybe it'll be on Amazon. Maybe it'll wind up on Tubi or Zumo or Freebie or uh, one of those networks. Um, but uh, yeah, the answer is I'll let you know <laughs> when I know, when we get to that distribution uh, point. So what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about, it's not that windy out now, but it was before, about Windy Cahill. Windy Cahill was the first man killed by William H. Bonney. And uh, there's a project going on that I have, uh, I won't say taken over, but I've taken the lead on the next step. And uh, we're going to be marking Windy Cahill's grave out in the desert near Camp Grant, Arizona. And uh, here's a picture of the stone, uh, the front and back, you'll see. And this is spearheaded by the boys and girl, maybe girls, I'm not sure, I know it's one girl, of uh, Billy the Kid's Historical Coalition. And specifically, Jerry, and I, I know Jerry's going to be mad because it's, it's either Prather or Prather. I think it's Prather, but, but I'm not sure. Uh, so, no, maybe it's Prather. See, that's the thing. I just can't remember. But Jerry, is a, he's a great guy, and he raised the, uh, he raised the money for this tombstone um, to mark, to commemorate, you know, the, kind of the, the, the beginning of the real life of crime of Billy the Kid and, and to memorialize sites that are Billy the Kid related. I, I got to find out from him how you pronounce that name. If it's Prather, it's a tough guy. I'm Jerry Prather, and I'm going to kick your ass. But if it's Prather, then he drinks tea with his pinky up. And he goes, uh, oh, would you care for about a fisticuffs, yeah? So I'm not quite sure which one it is. He told me last time, and I can't remember it. And I'm a guy who people cannot remember or even understand how to pronounce his last name. So Jerry Prather or Prather. Jerry, my friend, uh, it's either this or it's this. But either way, thank you. <laughs> so Jerry asked me to take over the setting of this tombstone, this memorial for Windy Cahill. And uh, we're going to be doing that inside the next month. I want to make sure it gets good and hot in Arizona because <laughs> I like the heat. Uh, so I don't want to do it before it peaks out at, you know, whatever, 120 or something. Um, 
And so I'll be getting the stone here shortly in the next week or so, and then planning the expedition to go set it. Uh, and we're going to be filming the entire uh, project, you know, from really from start to finish. We're going to bring you an episode on that. Uh, the stone will be set on private land, so you will not be able to go see it. You'll be able to watch it here, but you, uh, the cemetery is now on private land. And Wendy's grave has been unmarked for a good long time, in the many decades now. Uh, that's not that unusual uh, when, when cemeteries kind of get annexed into private land. It doesn't mean that the, that the owner of the land did anything wrong. It just means there's nobody upkeeping it. We really had kind of the same issue when we marked the grave of Jose Chavez y Chavez uh, in that little private cemetery kind of in the middle of nowhere near Milagro, New Mexico. That, you know, there's potholes everywhere. Some of the stones are still there. Some are not. Some have toppled over. Some are broken. Um, but, uh, you know, there's just not anybody actively keeping it up because it is private. And the landowner is not required to, to maintain the cemetery. They're required to maintain the sanctity of it. But, they, you know, updating, you know, headstones and that kind of thing is probably beyond the pale. So, if you uh, want to see it, you can watch it here. Uh, I'm going to be bringing a little muscle with me that I'm trying to recruit right now because I don't have enough to uh, lift and set a tombstone all, all on my own. Um, but uh, it's going to be a it's going to be an interesting time, and I've got a little idea for a memorial for uh, Wendy. Now, if you don't know the story of Wendy Cahill, I'll go real quick. He was a blacksmith out at Camp Grant, Fort Grant, Arkansas, uh, uh, Arkansas, <laughs> uh, Arizona. And uh, Billy was uh, around that time and around that age in that area. He was stealing horses with John Mackey. He was, you know, in and out of prison. Anyway, uh, Wendy and Henry would get into it. Wendy was 31 years old when he was killed. Billy, Henry was 15, 16. And they would get into it. Wendy was a much bigger man, rotund maybe, <laughs> you might say. And... Uh, they uh, would they they'd fight. He he slapped Billy and humiliate him. And Billy, you know, was gambling for a living at that point, stealing and gambling. And so one night they probably got in. They got into it pretty good. Probably fueled by alcohol, at least on Wendy's part. He was known to be a drunk and a real. And he got the name Wendy because he was a blowhard. <laughs> oh, it talked a bunch. And uh, so they started fighting, physical fight, and uh, kind of rolled out onto the street off the you know off the uh, portal. And, uh, you know, Wendy probably outweighed uh, Billy by 100 pounds at that point and was about to get the better of him. And Billy did, I guess, the only thing he thought he could do, which was he pulled his gun and jammed it in old Wendy's belly and pulled that Sam Colt. And uh, that was that. He won the fight. Now, Wendy did not die until the uh, next day, later that night uh, or early the next day. And he did say he was able to uh, say this was, you know, Henry McCarty or Henry Antrim that did this. Um, uh, I called him a pimp. He called me a son of a bitch. I don't hit him. I didn't hit him, I think. Um, and then uh, he shot me. I, I don't know that Billy would have shot Wendy without wrestling or fighting or getting hit. I doubt it, but you never know. Uh, anyway, Wendy died. A coroner's jury was convened and found it to be unjustifiable homicide. Now, you take from that what you want. If Henry had stayed around, if they'd been able to catch him, he would have faced charges in that murder. He may have been able to make a defense, probably could have, that, you know, hey, this bigger, older man uh, just, you know, constantly abused and teased and tormented me. And then this time it got too physical and I had no choice. He was on top of me. I thought he was going to kill me. Um, you, you probably could have made some sort of case there. Uh, but uh, but Billy didn't wait on that. He uh, he got on his horse and he left for New Mexico, most likely never to return to Arizona. There are some stories that he might have gone back at some point to see Joe. And, uh, of course, if you're a Brushy fan, you, you know that he said he went and met uh, Catherine there and uh, went back to Arizona a couple times. But that's all confusing to me, so you have to figure that out. Wendy Cahill, 31 years old when he was killed, 1877, 31 years old. And that was a mature man, 31 years old now. <laughs> we got people <laughs> still living home with their mama. <laughs> so, um, 
that was he had a you know I guess decently long life. But uh, Billy either didn't make thirty one, hell he didn't make twenty one, or he made ninety one, or he made whatever the heck John Miller was uh, when he died. So. Uh, lots of excitement coming on that project. The uh, entire thing we're going to document and uh, we're going to show it to you here nicely edited uh, so you can get a good idea of uh, where we are. We can't tell you the exact location, obviously. Landowner does not want people traipsing through his property, climbing fences. Somebody steps in a gopher hole and breaks their ankle and sues them. None of that is going to happen. We can't allow that. But we can let you know and show you, at least on film, that old Wendy has been memorialized and uh, he he kicked off the uh, the killing career of one William H. Bonney. So there we go. All right, more good stuff coming up as far as interviews from the uh, upcoming Billy the Kid tapes. So <clears throat> pardon me, Billy the Kid tapes. So you'll get a few more uh, short uh, 10 minute episodes of some of those interviews, some of the juicy bits, but I've kept the best stuff for the film, so don't worry about that. I've uh, got some interviews coming up. Got an interview with John LeMay coming up, author John LeMay, who wrote Half Truths and Tall Tales about Billy the Kid, wrote a biography of Ash Upson, which I am really thrilled to talk to him about because I find Upson a fascinating character and really the shaper of the legend uh, uh, before Walter Noble Burns, uh, the legend of Billy the Kid. And so we'll be doing all that. And uh, if you've got any guests you think would be great, well, send them my way. What the heck are you doing? <laughs> hey, I'm also looking for folks that have what they believe to be Billy the Kid pictures. Um, I did a little post in one of the Facebook groups about this. I, got a, I had a, a, a number of people contact me and go, hey, I might be interested. What's the focus? I don't want to be... You know, I, I, I don't want to be, you know, laughed at or look like a kook or something. I just want to talk to you about your photographs. I want to know why you think they're the kid, what sort of provenance there is, what sort of research you've done. Um, take a look at it, understand maybe some of the things that would call into question whether it's him. There's got to be another picture of Billy out there somewhere. There's got to be. I mean, I can't believe that a kid that, you know, was that happy-go-lucky, apparently, uh, only stood in front of the camera that one time. And so... The only way to find it is to uh, have you show it to us. So if you'd like to come on the show and talk about your photo, all you need to do, leave a comment below after you subscribe if you haven't done that. Leave a comment below. and uh, Or you can email me at billythekidridesagain at gmail.com. Or go over to Twitter at btkrides, R-I-D-E-S. And uh, you can leave me a, a DM over there. And I'll get back with you and we'll schedule a uh, time to do it. The big music episode with Yukon Kim and James Townsend coming up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, all Billy inspired music, talking, reminiscing around the virtual campfire. See if I can get a little campfire in the background. Um, talking about their uh, you know, interest in the kid and singing some songs about him. And uh, that's it for today. So, Wendy Cahill, we're coming for you, but not to kill you, this time to uh, immortalize you. And. Uh, this is uh, Michael G. for All Things Billy the Kid. I'll see you next time. Out. <laughs>